And at this point of time, I want you to prepare your heart, our heart, with our lesson with regards to great perspective of God. Of course, three things are we have in this perspective. Number one is the integrity of God. Number two is the importance of God. And number three, the interest of God. And with this account, we know that God called Moses to be the deliverer of Israel in our, out of Egypt. And remembering that Moses is on the backside of the desert and no one uh, is present but him and God. God has told him to go unto Pharaoh and tell him to let the people of God go. But Moses is hesitant. Remember their conversation in Exodus chapter 3. He was hesitant because he was asking God in whose name. Right? I am going to tell the Pharaoh. So, you could find that the conversation changes to the children of Israel. And Moses asked God what name he shall use in convincing first the Israelites to go with him. And God makes a statement that has been repeated thousands, maybe even millions of, of times since. Bible says in whose name? Very clear. In Exodus chapter 3, the verses, or the verse that we just read a while ago during our scripture reading, where it says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So, in the New Testament, we see Jesus were used the same the same name several times. So he, a lot of word I am. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the light. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd. Just to mention three or four. Now. Have we ever stopped to think why God did not continue in the praise in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14? Why did he just say, I am that I am? Why did he not go ahead and state what he was? You see, there is no beginning and no ending to God. Thank God in our Sunday school lesson, we, we discuss about the existence of God. And we know that God has no beginning. Amen? Where it says, before the creation, before the beginning of the world, uh, Moses explained, Moses wrote, in the beginning, God. When creation was created, he said, nang pasimula. When, world, when the world was created, then God is already in existence existence so there are no boundaries there is no height nor that limit because we believe uh, God is without boundary he had stated that he was that would have limited himself to the particular claim when he said I am that I am he is whatever you need Whatever he says, happens. You see, if you need a comporter, he is our comporter. Amen? If you need a provider, he is our provider. If you need a savior, he is our savior. If you need an anchor, he is an anchor. If you need an understanding listener, he is just that. 
Like in First Peter chapter 5, you remember? Sabi niya, casting all your care, for He careth. Actually, that's also part of our lesson in our Sunday school. He cares. And sometimes we never felt God caring for us because we never come to Him. <clears throat> Di ba? We never come to Him. He that cometh to Him must believe that He is existing. That He is willing to listen when you come to Him in faith. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him or to please God. So in this perspective of God, or great perspective of God, let us consider first the integrity of God. What is integrity? Integrity is the state of being whole. Amen. It is the state of being whole and, of course, soundness of moral character. Of course, since God is uh, meaning we could see excellence of character, morals, or virtue. Generous, kindness, and of course, honesty. So, that is integrity. The best or most nourishing part of anything, your essence and strength. God. We use the term, uh, we use the term with regard to his integrity, it means that is the quality. Goodness is one of the quality and integrity of God. Of course, He has integrity. Uh, he has integrity and He can be anything else. He has integrity because what? He is God. Amen? He is God. He has integrity because of what He does. But he has integrity because of who he is. You see, he, has, he is not God because he has integrity. He has God, uh, uh, he has integrity because he is God. Brethren, the Bible says in Psalms 107, verses 8 to 9, Oh, that man would praise the Lord. You know the reason why? Because our Lord is good. And His wonderful works to the children of men, for He satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with His goodness. That is our God. He has given us that which we do not deserve. Now just imagine, He has not given that which we do not deserve. So, Christian, <coughs> imagine, we should praise Him for His integrity. His integrity is far beyond imagination. We can't imagine what life would be like without God's integrity. You see, without uh, the integrity of God being bestowed upon us, I suppose it would be the very likeness of hell itself. Brethren, the integrity of God. And as a Christian, you can rely on Him. You can depend on Him. You can uh, you can remain confident in what He promised 
because the person you trusted the person we 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 serve the person we we worship is a person of integrity no not only knowing that the, the integrity of God but also the importance of God and the importance of God is seen through the suffering of his children like for example Stephen Stephen actually from from the book of Acts chapter 7 verses 54 to 60 uh, Acts chapter 7 uh, verses 54 to, uh, to 60 says when they heard these things they were cut to his heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth but he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and he said behold I see the heavens open and the Son of Man is standing on the right hand of God then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran after him with one accord and cast him and cast him out of the city and stoned and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name <coughs> sorry was Saul and he stoned and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice Lord lay not this sin to their charge and when he had said this fell asleep you could see the importance of God is seen through the suffering of his children and during the time Stephen he was stoned to death for becoming witness for Christ and as he, he was about to die he saw Jesus amen he saw Jesus God allowed Jesus to be seen by this young witness you know why because God knows how uh, the Lord is important you see even this witness give importance to God and and because of that God allowed him to be seen by this witness he gave importance he lifted up his eyes and when he, when he lifted his, his eyes he saw the word Jesus Christ he gave importance to God with his dying breath probably when he was crying illusion but the Bible says when we read it you see it is inspiring to know and to know if you give give importance to God God also gave importance upon his spirit it is a personal experience of this man now notice here those who suffered the suffered the importance of God is seen through the suffering of his children even uh, this man is already uh, dying you see and even John on Pat Patmos he was boiled alive in hot oil exiled on the Isle of Patmos and left to die but brethren but God wasn't finished with him yet others likewise do the same thing I remember like like Porticar imagine only God knows the death 
of his suffering. He needs to be burned alive. Just, just imagine if he wants to physically alive. All he had to do is to deny Christ. Now, my question this more this afternoon or this morning: Do we give importance to that? As God give importance to us, you see. <coughs> and sometimes God wa God wants you. God wants uh, you want God to give importance on us. We're in fact we're not giving importance to God. If God is important in our life. I know that talagang you you will show it. We will show it. Like these men. They were they were a witness. Even in their death, they they look up to God and uh, they sense they, 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 they saw God, they feel the presence of God in their life, and they felt that they were they are they were important to him. They were important to God. We know that God is important in our life. And we know that we are also important to God. Notice here, other, others likewise do the same thing like Poly, Polycarp. Only God knows the depth of their suffering. But they continued to give importance to God and witness to others. When he was at the time of his, you know, judgment, deny Christ and live, or say Christ and die. And while Polycarp steadfastly speaking and telling, believing God, then he was burned alive for God. Brethren, we know that if God is important in our life, we will give every best that we can for His glory. Because God gave importance to the loss, right? He gave importance. The importance of God is seen to the uh, through the sinlessness of His Son and through His Majesty. The Bible says in, in John chapter 17, verses 4 to 5, Sabi niya, I have glorified Thee on earth. I have finished uh, the work which Thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify Thou me with Thy own self, with the glory which I had with Thee before the world was. And Christian, it is seen, the importance of God is seen through the sinlessness of His Son. Just imagine how we suffered much for our sin. Through His majesty and through His manifestation, how He manifested Himself to us because you are important to him. Now notice Christian, uh, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Christian, not only through his manifestation, but even through his message. In, in John chapter 17 verse 8 says, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. And Christian, through his message, we could see here the importance of God is seen through his sinlessness of his son. Not only through His message, but even through His might. As thou hast given me, He said, As thou hast given Him power over all the flesh, 
that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Brethren, the importance of God is seen through the substitute for sin. Why God is as important? You know the reason why? Because only God could die for sin. Only God. Only God could pay the ransom price. If salvation can be viable, how much will you pay for your salvation? How much? What how much? is the worth of your salvation? According to First Peter chapter one, verse eighteen, uh, First Peter chapter one, verses eighteen and nineteen, very clear. Uh, the statement of the Lord here is very clear, as the Bible stated uh, that we are not redeemed for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So you see, only God could pay the ransom price. And only the Creator could die for his creation. Remember that the Son of God became the substitute for sin. You know why? Because he gave importance for the sinner. Amen. He gave importance for the price of our salvation. He gave importance for His creation. He gave importance to stand as a substitute. Instead of us paying our sin, God took it in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave His body to be given to sin. Amen? He gave His body to be given uh, to sin and in doing provided a way of escape for sinful men. See Him as a result of what He did. See Him as He hangs on the old rugged cross so despised by men. Now just imagine. Have you noticed how important I am in the sight of God? How important you are in the sight of God. How we, important we are in God by giving us importance. We disobeyed Him. We violated His laws. We, we, we rebelled against God. And yet despite of the uh, action made and given by man, you, you, you will see that He was hung on the old rugged cross and yet man despise Him. See Him as He suffers the agony and pain of sin for you and for me. Brethren, see Him as He looks toward His heavenly Father for comfort and compassion and the Father rejects Him. Christian, see Him as He dies alone without anyone. To comfort him. But it's hard for humanity to see any glory in such an episode. But all the while, the wicked one was being stripped of his power over mankind. I always imagine what he has done in us, in the world, and in the believers. You know the reason why he did that? Because you are important to him. And if God is important in our life, 
if you could not, if you could not do the same likewise, then do what he wanted us to. You can either say what 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 Paul says when he was uh, when he was uh, cornered by the Lord on the way to Damascus, when he was acted by God on on the way to Damascus to slay and to persecute the early church during that time. And in his personal confrontation with the Lord, knowing his incapacity to save himself, he asked the Lord, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Amen? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And God said, go into the city. Meaning, if God is important in our life, as God showed you are important to Him. When He first went and lived the splendor of heaven, to live in this life for you, in order for you to be saved, brethren, do the same thing likewise. <clears throat> be a witness. And then, the last one is, ano yung ating pangore? The interest of God. You know, the interest of God is giving you a gift. Giving you a gift. The Father is interested in giving His only, no other son. Only begotten son. The Mormon said, Satan is the eldest brother of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Notice here, God's interest, why he gave his only begotten Son. You see, because he is interested. God is, is interested in saving the lost. Amen? In saving mankind. God knows that we cannot save ourselves in our own. And that's the reason why he sent Jesus. Sabi niya, for God so loved the world that he gave his best gift which is the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is His only Son. Amen? In what reason why He gave His Son? So that mankind, upon trusting Him, would, would find salvation in Christ Jesus. Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Remember, even the Father, they are not pointing us to be religious. Amen? The Father never pointing us to do such good works. The, the Father does not point us to be educated and be saved. The Bible is pointing us to Christ upon trusting, upon believing, where, which the Bible says, Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And thank God we attained it. Amen. We trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. You know the reason? Because of the interest of God. He is interested. God is interested in saving you and me. And we got it. He reaches us. He touches us. He saves us. He chose us. And on the part of the Son, for the wages of sin is death. You know, on the part of Christ, as Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, For us by one man sin entered into the world. But, no, no, I'm sorry, verse 8. But God commanded His love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. Now in Romans 6.23, do you know what happened to Christ? He died and offered you all for a gift of eternal life. Amen. Kasi eternal, eternal life. Eternal life is designed for eternity in heaven. Eternal death is designed for eternal separation in hell. And we obtain that eternal life as a gift from God. And it is through Jesus Christ. When God is, is pointing out to Christ as his gift to us, and when the sinner received that gift, we often receive the gift of eternal life. That's why in the time we will never perish in hell. Amen? In the time of Papa Hamak Saint Pierre, no. Because God is interested in giving his gift of a son and giving a gift of eternal life. All we have to do to do that is to come to him in faith. Amen? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. People keep on striving and being tired, doing all the works, doing all the kinds of philosophy, doing all uh, the kinds of way to reach heaven, but they couldn't. Why? Because those are not the road into eternal life. They went uh, in their own way. The Bible says, and some in the Bible, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, we have to come to Christ because Christ is the gift of God. Remember, uh, a gift is given through grace and love. Imagine, yung biyaya at pag-ibig, namnamin po natin yun. Now, let us enjoy that given gift. It is through grace and love. Meaning, it cannot be earned. Amen? Biyaya nga eh. And love. When He gave it, He gave it with grace and He gave it with love. You do not need to pay for it. You do not need to strive for it. You do not need to work for it. You do not need to do... You have nothing to do with it. It is given. God is interested when He saves you. He saves you without you doing nothing except believing. Amen? except trusting. So, most of what we give as gift to friends is merely some time of payback. Sometimes our interest of giving is because of payback, right? Gusto natin tumulong kasi sooner we want us to be helped. Remember, God didn't owe man anything. If someone takes us out to lunch, we feel we must repay the favor. A gift does not demand repayment. Amen? Kaya nga gift eh. You know what uh, yung saksi ni Hoba in the Philippines are doing, right? They have all the gods and carries in Torna. Right? Showing and giving you some booklets and literatures. You can have it. Just give us a donation of 10 pesos. They said it is free. Mag-donate ka lang ng limang piso. Just uh, 5 pesos donation. It is not free when you give a certain amount like 5 pesos probably the 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 amount of uh you the, the the amount you gave is more than the amount of the book but when 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 it is free it is free indeed amen 
but they are asking for something. Listen, a gift does not demand repayment. Man had nothing coming. Thus God did not pay back. Why? He paid it all. Amen? He paid it all. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, as I close, According as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in that. Remember, Christian, our God is great in integrity. Amen? Our God is great in showing importance. And then numberless, our God is great for showing interest upon our lives. Have you seen how great our God is? Now look at that perspective. Look at that perspective. The perspective of God in two things. The integrity of God. The importance of God. And then the interest of God. God is interested in every life. The first interest he wants for his creation is to save him. That he might use him and put him in the same place. And we are we see great perspective of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the simplicity of your word. I am praying, dear Heavenly Father, that this message, though short, praying that it touches the heart of your people, knowing your perspective upon our life. First, we saw your integrity. And then, you showed how important we are and how important you are in our life. And you showed us how interested you are in your creation. You've seen them fall, stumble, and you made a way on how to get back to them and help them to the path to a gift of the Son, Jesus Christ, in order for us to take salvation in Christ Jesus. So, so thank you, Lord, for everything you've done in our life. And I am praying, Lord, that this message challenges us as I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.